Footy is back, and opening round, in my opinion, was pretty enjoyable. The Swans and Brody Grundy shrugged off any doubts their midfield would struggle early in the season, while Carlton made a huge statement with a 46-point comeback at the Gabba. Gold Coast Hardwick era got off to a brilliant start as Matthew Rowell had 20 clearances, and the Giants got some tasty revenge over the Pies for last year's prelim. This is the Football Come Down. G'day everyone, welcome back to True Footy and for the first time, the AFL Come Down. Now, what is the AFL Come Down? I am thinking of making this a bit of a weekly show, a bit of a community based show, where we come to discuss the things that happened in the previous round. So, today we're going to kick it off with opening round. So, it's a bit of a review show. I've done review content in the past, and to be honest, after a few rounds, usually the interest kind of dies off, and to be honest, it's very boring content to make. Simply going through and analyzing and telling you who the best performers were in each game, it's not fun for me, doesn't get a lot of interest. From you, so I thought of rejigging the format this year and involving the viewers more. So what that's going to look like is on the YouTube community tab, if you click onto it in this channel, you'll find a post from me every weekend asking for your thoughts on the round. I'm going to start doing that at the start of each round. I'll also put up a post on Instagram and you can share your thoughts and I'll pick a few of them to feature in a video and discuss. So to just cover off my thoughts on opening rounds, to be honest, I personally quite like the format. I don't really see too much strength in the arguments against it. You know, we got four pretty damn good fixtures. That's something that's probably annoyed me in the past more is when they have really lame games to start round one. All four of these games had, you know, close game potential and we had some really good matches. I think every opening round or round one, generally there's an opportunity for teams to make statements. And I think just about every team who won a game made it a significant statement. So obviously Sydney beat Melbourne. Their statement was the fact that they were, you know, undermanned through the midfield, had Taylor Adams, Callum Mills obviously missing Luke Parker and they come in and they beat one of the stronger midfields in the competition. Gold Coast, you could say, made a statement in that they kicked off the Hardwick era with a big win. And they look pretty damn good doing it. And we'll talk about individual performances this week as well. And then GWS exacted a bit of revenge over Collingwood uh, with a pretty emphatic win by 32 points in the end. But I think if I had to pick out who was the biggest statement maker this round, it's got to be Carlton. I think to go to the Gabba, where the prelim was played, where they were beat, with the injuries that they have, with some doubt over how Carlton was going to start this year, to even get to a point where they're 46 points down in that game, to come back and win, and for it to be Harry Mackay who kicks the set shot goal when there's a lot of criticism over over his set shot kicking routine. I think the narrative just wound up perfectly there. So I think every winning team made a statement this week, but I think the biggest winners were Carlton in a sense. The next question is who was the biggest loser in this particular round? I mean, there's probably a couple to pick from. I can probably, you know, forgive Melbourne for their performance to some extent. Tough opponent away from home. Collingwood as well. I have tipped the Giants for the Premiership this year, so I can't sit here and really criticize Collingwood, even though they've certainly beaten on the night bit inefficient for sure. So the two that come to mind here are probably the Brisbane Lions and Richmond as the two biggest losers, and I'll clarify why. For Brisbane, you know, my personal take was that as well as Carlton started playing in that game, I really did think that Brisbane stopped in their tracks. Now, am I saying that this result will severely impact Brisbane's chances of making the grand final again? No. And I do realize that they are pretty notorious for not having good round one performances. So you can excuse it a little bit. I'm not trying to blow it out of proportion, but I think to lose what is kind of an eight point game against another team that we expect will probably be in the mix for top four. Or at least I did. I thought they were particularly disappointing as good as Carlton were. And secondly, Richmond. You know, I think Richmond, even though I personally put them in the bottom three, I do think, you know, naturally Richmond fans probably had a bit of expectation still. And, you know, I understand why they have faith in some of their top end talents. And while some of them were out, they did get schooled for a large period of that game against Gold Coast. The score at one point was, I think, 74 to 14. And it did just show a big golf in between a young up and coming side and Richmond. Now, again, we're not trying to extrapolate narratives from round one and say that, you know, Richmond is stuffed. But, you know, part of this will be analyzing winners and losers each week. And I think Richmond could be the biggest loser out of this weekend. One other interesting moment I saw from the Gold Coast Richmond game was the rush behind moment where a Richmond player is penalized for grabbing the ball under no real pressure, walking it back over the line. Gold Coast are awarded the free kick. Let me know in the comment section, what are your thoughts on this? Obviously, they've been really inconsistent with this rule. To be honest, I think that it's a textbook case of where a free kick should have been paid. So we'll go through some notable performances of this round. I think uh, if we go in chronological order, for Sydney, I think Brody Grundy's performance probably won the ruck battle. One of the best on ground for Sydney. You know, it's good to see a bit of a redemption arc. He hasn't had the best couple of years in general. Also for the Swans, I think Isaac Heaney moving into the midfield was a really interesting move. Now for fantasy watchers, I, I don't know what to make of that. Sure, he, he did play well, probably one of their best on ground as well. But if you're concerned of fantasy, I, I don't know if this is a temporary thing while, you know, the other three midfielders are out. Either way, great performance for him. For the Demons, a couple 
couple of players caught my eye. I think Jack Viney probably should get three votes for this performance. Now, I know that usually goes to the winning side, but two goals and 30 touches. I thought he was really, really strong in the contest, as he so often is. Christian Salem, as well, was probably a noteworthy one because he spent a lot more time at stoppages. He scored about 95 in fantasy as well. As for the second game of the round, Brisbane and Carlton, notable performances. One that comes to mind is Harry Mackay. Not only did he kick the, you know, the winning set shot, real clutch goal, respect to him. He's got a lot of pressure. That would have been possibly more of a pressured situation than most other players in that scenario because of the narrative around him. But I also thought he did impact the contest in the ruck as well. So maybe that's a format that Carlton continue to pursue. Charlie Kerno was also fantastic in this game. Big surprise there. For the Lions, I really thought Charlie Cameron had an almost game. It was sort of like he was dangerous. I think he missed a really easy set shot deep in that game. And in the end, obviously, that proved pretty critical. And his goal at the end, actually, he kicked a goal that really reminded me of in the grand final when he kicks the goal to, I think, put Brisbane in front. Similar sort of scenario, similar point in the game. I'm pretty sure this would put the Lions in front only for him to then watch his team concede a goal immediately. A couple other notable performances I want to shout out. Matthew Rao getting 20 clearances in a game. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I think in the live stream chat, someone said it was the second highest clearance count ever. I've never heard of that before. Matthew Rao, 20 clearances. That is insane. Definitely one to watch this year. Ben King also kicked five goals. He was really, really good. And I think from the GWS Collingwood game, you know, there was Callum Brown. He kicked five goals in the end, I think he ended up with. But Josh Kelly was also really good. 32 touches and 10 score involvements. As for the lowlights, those were the notable performances. Lowlights. I'm not going to pick on any performances as such, but the biggest low lights from this weekend. We got two ACLs out of Brisbane versus Carlton this weekend. Kitty Coleman, you know, kicked a player, his knee hyperextended, awful stuff. Sam Doherty's, I didn't actually see at the time, but he's jarred a knee, confirmed with an ACL. Two ACLs from that game. That is awful. Now, I'm not sure if I'll pursue with a fantasy segment every single week that I do this because we're so early in the season. I did think it would be worthwhile to point out a few observations I made this weekend. I'll run through them pretty quick. We saw Brody Grundy get 118. We saw Heaney get 121. Again, with the caveat that I don't know how long he's going to spend actually in the midfield. Salem getting 95 is pretty promising. I think he's priced at about 700K. Matthew Roberts getting 91. That surprised me. I didn't see that coming. But again, an opportunity created from Sydney's injuries. I'm sure you've already worked out right now. It's a good idea to get Kitty Coleman out of your team as well due to his ACL. Matthew Rowell scored 112. Can he keep up that pace? I'm not sure. Butterick, 88 in the back line. Sexton got 80. And in the last game, Darcy Cameron's 131 was really impressive. He did play really well, as did Lockie Whitfield with 137. So just picking out a few highlights there. Again, I realize that not all of their audience is into fantasy content. So let me know in the comments if it does actually enhance the show or does it bore you? Let me know. Great, so the next segment is where we go through your comments around the round. LD Sports says, my tip for Carlton missed the eight was looking great for about a quarter and a half. Yeah, that's true. I think like everyone had their doubts about uh, Carlton when the score was like 58 to 12 or whatever it was. And you know, kind of rightfully so, but it was so early in the game that I think we all got a swift lesson. I wasn't writing him off for the season, but I did think, you know, geez, Carlton have started the season poorly. Zoktavoy, Kerno still got it, thought he would drop off after a couple of seasons. No, he was fantastic, wasn't he? AFL snaps, 46 point comeback, then random Aussie things. Member of the channel, shout out, says Carlton are peaking way too soon. Well, I mean, they started the season last year pretty well. Probably not that well. This is probably more of a continuation of last season, uh, but we'll see. I think the best time to slump in a year is probably like rounds 15 to 19. John G. Rose Snow says, media types will attribute last night's win as an opening round success when everyone's still wondering why the AFL is doing this bush league round zero mental gymnastics. I mean, yeah, I'm sure you can form an argument as to maybe it is pointless, I guess, but I thought the, the actual event of, of opening round was kind of fun. Like it uh, pretty much just brought the season forward a week. It didn't push our teams back. And, you know, they made a conservative effort to make the games good. I do think this will probably be a one-off, but I thought we were treated to four good games and, you know, we still get like 24, four rounds plus opening round now. So it's just made the season longer. I'm all for it, to be honest. Fruhausen says, still waiting for round one. Briefly listened to on radio, heading to shops, but as a dog supporter, anticlimactic season start for me. Sure, I, I get why it's a little anticlimactic if your team's not involved, but I just think of it as the season being extended forward rather than anything being pushed back because March 6th has like, got to be the earliest we've set, started a season in a long time. Cosmic Start says, not the start the Lions wanted, especially losing a key player. Yeah, that's probably the biggest L from their weekend is, is common as an ACL. Melbourne are looking a bit shaky, but still too early to call, but the Swans came to play. Yep, fair assessment. Zach Vitus says, New South Wales teams are looking powerful right now. I did predict a Sydney versus GWS grand final, so that's got off to a great start, but it's too early. Carpair reckons ba baggers for flaggers, question mark. I mean, too early to say. Crispy Gamer says, the Lions really do suck 
for the first few rounds of a season. Only won one of the last six first rounds. Yeah, I think that last one was against us maybe uh, in 2019 or maybe there's been one since then. If that's the worst it gets, they weren't too bad. I just do think they fell asleep for a large period of that game. I made out of brown mess says... Richmond are done. Yeah, I mean, that was already my belief. What do you mean by done? I, I suppose we mean, you know, probably not going to make finals. Don't want to extrapolate just simply off one game, but what we saw was aligned with my preseason prediction. So we have a bit more hate for opening around as a concept. We got Wade saying it's shite, but also the Carlton are a top four Monty with that comeback. I mean, I predicted them fourth. I'm not going to say they're a Monty just yet, but gee, they look pretty good when they flick the switch in that game. Hate seeing blokes go down with season end is especially common. Agreed. Melbourne are definitely not the world beaters they were a few years ago. They are cooked. So yeah, I'll probably just stop short of agreeing that Melbourne are cooked, but you know, the, the things that we wanted to see, or perhaps the things that Melbourne fans wanted to see from them, those improvements have not been made, but it has only been one game. Ubra says the whole opening round idea is garbage. Some teams play twice before others even get their first game in. Yeah, that's kind of interesting, but like I said, I don't mind it too much. Still kind of better than the Premier League, another league that I follow where, yeah, teams have played like three more games than others sometimes. So I did also post this on Instagram, so I'll go through a few of these. Benjamin Herbert says, GWS are the real deal. If Gold Coast play as good as they did in the first half, they're like finals. Agreed. So I agree that GWS are the real deal, hence my prediction. Gold Coast, I think that's a big if, if they can sustain that, but we've seen them start seasons well before. I still expect them to possibly be the best version that we've seen of them. Riles Macca says, use of the subs were very good. Weeks for Sydney, also Carol, Ross, and McMullen, great. I didn't actually think about this, so that is a good observation from Riles Macca. Rogue Riot, member of the channel, says, I am sad, GWS good, Pies less good, <laughs> but we'll be all right. It is only earlier in the season, and I do think GWS will be a formidable team. So even if you're a premiership contender this year, Going to Sydney and losing at uh, NG Stadium, as it's now called, is not a huge marker on you. Raz says that the Pies need to find another tall defender quick to help Darcy Moore out while Murphy is out. I do agree. Like Across the board, Collingwood don't have the strongest key position stock, so you're taking Murphy out of that team that's already missing McStay, and the structure's not great. And I do also think they kind of struggled inside 50 this week. Raz also points out that Matthew Rao has arrived. Yeah, he could have. He could have. We've seen, you know, that was probably his best performance at AFL level. It was absolutely unreal. You'd think he gets three round low votes. Hopefully he can sustain it for sure. Caden Riley also put Collingwood Premiership hangover incoming. I won't agree on that just yet. I do think the Giants are a very formidable opposition. So thank you very much for your input, guys. I already enjoy this format more than the one I used to do. As always, I, I, like, I look forward to interacting with you and make sure you use the community tab to try and stay involved with the show and get your comments featured. We also are bringing back live streams in a big way. Uh, I did three this weekend. I've also found a way to, to get other people, like guests, onto the stream as well, which is fantastic. Had so much more fun doing it that way. Uh, also, this coming weekend, I'm not sure what other game I'll do, but I'll definitely be doing West Coast versus Port Adelaide on this channel, not on True Eagle. But I'll probably do at least one more stream as well. So it'd be great to have you along for the ride. But anyway, guys, I would love some feedback on the format. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.